Well, good evening, church family, and those watching here on uh, our Facebook uh, page and also on YouTube. Uh, thank you for watching this tonight and tuning in on Wednesday night, uh, April 8th. We're so glad that you're with us here uh, this evening. Uh, as I've uh, told our church family and also uh, in previous, uh, previous posts, we are, as a church, going to be having a special Good Friday service this Friday, April 10th. At 7 o'clock, uh, we'll be posting that. And so uh, tonight we're just going to do a short little Bible study. And uh, then Friday we will have a, uh, a longer uh, dedicated uh, service for Good Friday. And so I just wanted to give you a couple words of encouragement tonight and a couple thoughts as we enter into and as we're really in the midst of uh, this Holy Week, uh, one of the most wonderful uh, weeks that we can celebrate and really remember uh, spend time throughout this week remembering uh, that final week of our Lord uh, and what he did for us on that Good Friday and paying our redemption uh, on the cross. What a, what a thought. And so uh, as we're in the middle of Holy Week, I trust that you have been taking some time, perhaps in your personal devotions, to, uh, to look into uh, the events of the week, whether it's a reading plan that sort of has the days laid out uh, or whatever it may be. Uh, I'm going to give you some encouragement at the end. Uh, as you prepare for uh, this weekend and Good Friday for some reading. And so I trust that you will take advantage of that as we, as we continue to look on. Now, uh, we have found ourselves, uh, and I, I don't think it's a coincidence, but over the last few uh, weeks and days, you know, as, I, as we prepare for these times, you know, I pray and ask the Lord, you know, what, what passage of Scripture uh, should we be speaking on? I, I, have, a, I have a preaching calendar uh, but some of those, uh, those things we've just sort of pushed back and really trying to address some things that we're encountering even here and now. And I keep finding myself ending up in the Gospel of John. And I don't think it's any secret that the Gospel of John is, is one of my favorite books, and it's a beautiful book, and really written to provide peace and to provide hope uh, for God's people. And if you remember last time, last Wednesday, we looked at John 14. And I had mentioned one of my favorite passages was the high priestly prayer of Jesus in John 17. So we're going to look a little bit at that tonight. So I would encourage you to take your Bibles and go to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. This is uh, the final prayer Jesus has with his disciples before he has, he has taken in the garden and the events leading up to the crucifixion. And in John chapter 17, Jesus is uh, praying a beautiful prayer. Jesus is praying, and what he's doing, and he's praying for a couple things in this chapter. He begins by praying for, uh, praying for himself. The first few verses, he's he's pleading to God the Father, and he's he's lifting him, himself up. He says, "Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also glorify thee." And so Jesus is making this plea to God the Father as he. As he begins uh, this wonderful chapter. So he, be, he prays for himself. And also he prays for his disciples. He prays for his followers. Beginning in, in, in verse 6. Jesus then begins to explain it to, uh, and lay out specific requests he has for his followers, the disciples. Jesus knew the things they would go through. And in turn he prays for them. As a matter of fact, one of, the things, one of the verses that sticks out for that is verse 15. He says to, to he prays, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. You know, sometimes when uh, difficult things happen and when trials come, we want to just be taken out of it. We want it to go away. But in this prayer, Jesus is saying, Father, I pray not that you would take them out of the world, but that you will keep them, that you will hold them, that you will see them through. You know, God has promised something even better than removing our problems. He's promised to go through our problems with us and to be there with us, to keep us from those things and to encourage us along the way. But what I want to look at especially is chapter, beginning in chapter 20 is the third thing that Jesus prays for in this chapter is his prayer for future believers. And as I mentioned last week, that's his prayer for us, for me and for you. What a thought. That Jesus prays for us in this special prayer. And what he says here in verse 20, he says, Neither pray I for these alone, speaking of his disciples, 
but also, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. If you've trusted Christ this evening, that's you. That's me. He's praying for us. What's he praying for? That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. What he's saying here is one of the beautiful things, and really one of the characteristics of true believers is their unity, is the fact that people from all walks of life can be so united under one cause and one Christ. That's a beautiful thing. When you go into a church and you see people from uh, every age, race, and, and so on, and you see all these different people, what could unite them? What is possible to unite all these different people? It's Christ. That's the reason. He's praying for unity, and that's going to show the world that Christ is in us. But he continued, And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. Verse 23, a little, a little difficult to understand, but I think you'll get what I'm saying. It says, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Now that is a beautiful, beautiful verse. What that verse is saying to us is that Jesus is praying to God the Father. He's saying, uh, if they are in me, if they accept me, if they believe in me, and you, Father, have believed me, then you love them as you love me. Do you ever think about that? If you're in Christ, if you've trusted him, God loves you like he loves Jesus Christ. You are, that's what he says at the end of the verse. He says, and hast loved them as, you have, as thou hast loved me. The love for God that God has for his children is great. And if we're in Jesus Christ, if we, if we have accepted Jesus Christ, we then are made one with Christ. What a beautiful thought. They may be perfect in one. So one is, of course, our unity. And we have seen that even today as, as, as we have, uh, as a church, done, done our best to try to reach out and, and have uh, some kind of type of unity throughout this as we see, our, see, see through this. But also our love, the love that we have for each other. I'm so thankful to hear of many of our church members who are to going the extra step, being as safe as possible, but going the extra step to show love. And I, as your pastor, truly, truly appreciate that. Many of you are making phone calls. Many of you are writing cards and sending messages and doing some creative things to get out and encourage one another. And what a blessing that is. Let's keep doing that. Keep reaching out and showing the love of Christ to each other. Just that little gesture can mean so much to so many. And so in this passage, we are comforted and reminded of these wonderful truths. Something else about, really I don't have a verse on this, but something else that I found reading through this, uh, the, these passages of Scripture for the Passion Week is the fact that this is a, much, a very prolonged time. And at any time... Jesus could have called 10,000 angels, as the song says, but he died for you and for me. And when I think that scene after scene, event after event, and situation after situation, Jesus going through all those things and all those beatings and all those difficulties, at any time had the power to stop it, but he didn't. You know what that tells me? That tells me that Jesus was intentional and Jesus was set on fulfilling the will of the Father, and that is paying for our redemption on Calvary. And we celebrate that this week, and we're going to be reminded of those things as we do our reading. I want to encourage you over these next few days, today is Wednesday, April 8th, and I want to encourage you, beginning tomorrow, if you want to maybe follow along and sort of trace those steps of that first Good Friday that you would follow along and read, actually read with me. I'll be doing that tomorrow. In Matthew chapter 26, you can begin tomorrow on Thursday. In Matthew 27, you can read that on Friday before our Good Friday service. And then Saturday, of course, you can spend some time in reflection. And then on Sunday, before our service at 11 o'clock, you could read Matthew 28, the story of the first Easter. 
And uh, I would encourage you to do that over these next few days. So Matthew 26 tomorrow, Matthew 27 Friday, and then Matthew chapter 28 on Sunday. And I know you'll receive a blessing from that. Well, church family, we love you, and we are so thankful for you. And I trust that you are having a wonderful week. And again, I would greatly encourage you to reach out to us during this time. Uh, it is, uh, we are doing our, our effort to try to reach out and connect with folks. And uh, we just don't want to forget anybody or have anyone fall through the cracks. So uh, we're trying, doing our best. And I know I can speak for a lot of pastors when I say, let's uh, keep our communication up as best we can. To that end, I would encourage you, uh, some of our communications I've been sending out the last few uh, days and weeks have been pretty lengthy. Uh, there's a lot of things to discuss, a lot of things to, uh, to inform you on. And so I would encourage you on a couple things. Number one, uh, if you have not put your email address into our church communication system that you all have, if you have not done that, please do that. If, you're not, if you have an email address and you're not getting emails from the church, we've sent them out usually every few days. And so if you're not getting emails from the church, please, please, I would implore you to send me your email address so I can add that in, or you can do it yourself through our CTRN uh, mobile app or online. So please add your email addresses as many of these communications are somewhat long. Second of all, if you have not heard, uh, some of our uh, ministry leaders are hosting Zoom video, video uh, calls and video uh, meetings. And so uh, for our teams, those are on Sundays and, and Thursdays, Sundays at 5.30, Thursday at 7. I think that's correct. Uh, and then for our, our, our uh, young, young kids, uh, we are having uh, Miss Glenda host uh, one for them as well on Sundays. And so uh, if, you're, if you have not been a part of that, we're also looking to do some more and we'll implement some of those later on and uh, trying to use technology and reaching out. And so if you, if you have not been on those, I would encourage you to be a part. And uh, we just want to be a blessing to you as, as we're able. So uh, we love you and I'm looking forward to this Friday. Come prepared. Friday at 7 o'clock. When I say come prepared, I mean come to your phone or your TV or wherever you watch our service. And Friday at 7 o'clock, we're going to be looking at that first Good Friday and what it means for us even today. So join us then on Friday, 7 o'clock. We'll be posting that. And uh, we love each and every one of you. Stay safe and God bless you.